Hey boys and girls. So one thing I love to do as a kindergarten teacher is do something called a read aloud. Now that's when we all sit together and I read a book. But what's special about the read alouds I love doing are that we read chapter books. Now I don't know if you're familiar familiar with the chapter book, but they are books that are just filled with words. There are some pictures sometimes, but it's mostly just words. And I would read maybe one or two chapters a day. The first chapter book series that I start with kids every year is about a girl named Junie B. Jones. Now I will read the first book this week. Next week I'll read another book about Junie B. Jones. Junie B. Jones is the character in these books that we're going to be reading and she is a kindergartner just like you. She is full of energy, she is kind of sassy, sometimes she doesn't listen very well, she makes mistakes, but it's quite an entertaining read. The first Junie B. Jones book I'm going to read is this one right here. It's pretty entertaining, but I always like to start out by talking about one of the words that she uses a lot in this book. There's a word even in the title of this book that I don't like to use, but she says it so I thought we'd talk about it. This book is called Junie B. Jones and the Stupid Smelly Bus. Now that word, stupid, I don't like to say it and I don't really like to hear it. So I thought I'd let you know what the book is called and I might say it once or twice when I read the story, but if I notice that it's in the book a lot, I might just change the word stupid for silly because that just sounds a little bit better. I don't know you boys and girls very well yet, so I don't want to say those words and make anybody feel upset about it. So for now, I'll just skip it sometimes when I'm reading. It's too bad though because Junie B. Jones doesn't really say those words outside of this first book, so it definitely helps you remember who she is though. When I'm reading this chapter book, I'm going to keep this board right behind me. I'll move it close so you can see it. But at the top it says chapter, and then right here it says one. So I'm gonna start by reading the first chapter. And when I'm reading the next chapter, I'm gonna erase that one and write a two on there. So that way if you pause the video, you can always remember what spot you're at because it will say what chapter we're on right here. Chapter one is called Meeting Misses. And there's a picture right here. Every time there's a picture, I'll make sure that you see it. But I'll have to hold the book like this so I can see the words. Chapter one, meeting Mrs. My name is Junie B. Jones. The B stands for Beatrice, except I don't like Beatrice. I just like B and that's all. I'm almost six years old. Almost six is when you go to kindergarten. Kindergarten is when you go to meet new friends and not watch TV. Today was my first day of school. I'd been to my room before though. Last week, mother took me there to, be, to meet my teacher. It was called meet the teacher day. My teacher was decorating the bulletin board with the letters of the alphabet. I already know those letters, I said. I can sing them, except I don't feel like it now. My teacher shook my hand, only our hands didn't fit together too good. Her name was Mrs. I can't remember the rest of it. Mrs. said I looked cute. I know it, I said. That's because I have on my new shoes. I held my foot way up high in the air. See how shiny they are? Before I put them on, I licked them. And guess what else, I said. This is my bestest hat. Grandpa Miller bought it for me. See the devil horn sticking out of the sides? Mrs. laughed, except I don't know why. Devil horns are supposed to be scary. Then we walked around the room and she showed me where the stuff was, like the easels where we get to paint and the shelves where the books are and the tables where we sit and don't watch TV. One of the tables in front of the room had a red chair. I would like to sit here, I think, I told her. But Mrs. said, We'll have to wait and see, Junie. B, I said. Call me Junie B. I hollered the B part real loud so she wouldn't forget it. People are always forgetting my B. Mother rolled her eyes and looked up at the ceiling. I looked up there too, but I didn't see anything. Are you gonna ride the bus, Junie B? Mrs. asked me. It made my shoulders go up and down. I don't know, where's it going to? My mother nodded her head and said, yes, she'll be riding the bus. That made me feel scary inside because I'd never ridden a bus before. Yelly, where's it going to? I said. Mrs. Sat on, sat on her desk. Then she and mother talked more about the bus. I tapped on Mrs. Guess what? I still don't know where it's going to. Mrs. smiled and said the bus driver's name was Mr. Wu. Mr. Wu, said mother. That's an easy name for Junie B to remember. I covered my ears and I stopped my foot. Yeah, only where's that smelly bus going to?
mother and Mrs. Frowns. Frowning is when your eyebrows look grumpy. Watch yourself, Missy, said mother. Missy's my name when I'm in trouble. I looked down at my shoes. They didn't look as shiny as they did before. Just then, another mother and a boy came in, and Mrs. went off to talk to them instead of me. Only I don't know why, though. The boy was hiding behind his mother and acting very babyish. After that, my mother sat me down and explained about the bus. She said it's yellow. And it's called a school bus. And it stops at the end of my street. Then I get on it, and I sit down, and it takes me to school. And then your teacher will meet you at the parking lot, said mother. Okay, Junie B, won't that be fun? I nodded the word yes. But inside my head, I said the word no. Chapter two, feeling squeezy. I stayed scared about the bus for a whole week. And last night when mother tucked me into bed, I felt sickish about it. Guess what? I said, I don't think I want to ride that bus to kindergarten tomorrow. Then mother rumpled my hair. Oh, sure you do, she said. Oh, sure I don't, I said back. Then mother kissed me and said, it'll be fun. You'll see, don't worry. I did though. I worried very much and I didn't sleep good either. At this mo And this morning I felt droopy when I got up and my stomach was squeezy and I couldn't eat my cereal. And so I watched TV until mother said it was time to get ready to go. Then I put on my skirt that looks like velvet and my new fuzzy pink sweater and I ate half a tuna sandwich for lunch. After that mother and I walked to the corner to wait for the bus. And guess what? There was another mother and a little girl there too. The little girl had curly black hair, which is my favorite kind of head. I didn't say hello to her though, cause she was fro from a different street, that's why. Then finally, this big yellow bus came around the corner and the brakes screeched very loud and I had to cover my ears. Then the door opened and the bus driver said, hi, I'm Mr. Wu, hop on. Except I didn't hop on, cause my legs didn't want to. I don't think I want to ride this bus to kindergarten, I told mother again. Then she gave me a little push. Go on, Junie B. Mr. Wu is waiting for you. Be a good girl and get on. I looked up at the windows. The little girl with the curly black hair was already on the bus. She looked very big sitting up there and kind of happy. Look how big that girl is acting, Junie B, said mother. Why don't you sit right next to her? It'll be fun, I promise. And so I got on the bus and guess what? It wasn't fun. Now, before I start reading chapter three, this is a good point to stop if you want to stop and save it for another day. When I read in the classroom, I only read one or two chapters a day. I just made one long video, so it would be all together. Chapter three, here's that word again, the stupid smelly bus. The bus wasn't like my daddy's car at all. It was very big inside and the seats didn't have any cloth on them. The little curly girl was sitting near the front and so I tapped on her. Guess what, I said. Mother said for me to sit here. No, she said. I'm saving the seat for my, for my best friend, Mary Mo Ruth Marble. Then she put her little white purse on the place where I was going to sit. And so I made a face at her. Hurry up and find a seat, young lady, said Mr. Wu. And so I quick sat up across from the curly mean girl and Mr. Wu shut the door. It wasn't a regular kind of door though. It folded in half and when it closed, it made a wishy sound. I don't like that kind of door. If it closes on you by accident, it will cut your finger off and it will make a swishy sound. The bus made a big roar. Then a big puff of black smelly smoke came out of the back end. It's called bus breath, I think. Mr. Wu drove for a while. Then the brakes made that loud screechy noise again and I covered my ears so it wouldn't get inside my head because loud screechy noises get inside your head. If they do that, you have to take an aspirin. I saw that on a TV commercial. Then the bus door opened again and a dad and a boy with a grouchy face got on. The dad smiled. Then he plopped the grouchy boy right next to me. This is Jim, he said. I'm afraid Jim isn't too happy this afternoon. The dad kissed the boy goodbye, but the boy wiped it off his cheek. Jim had on a backpack. It was blue. I love backpacks. I wish I had one of my very own. One time I found a red one on a trash can, but it had a little bit of gushy in it and mother said no. Jim's backpack had lots of zippers. I touched each one of them. One, two, three, four, I counted. Then I unzipped it. Hey, don't, yelled Jim. He zipped it right back up again and then he moved to the seat in front of me. I don't like that, Jim. After that, the bus kept stopping and starting and lots of kids kept getting on. Lots of kids, loud kids, and some of them were the kind who looked like mean people. Then the bus began getting very noisy and hot inside. 
and the sun kept shining down on me and my fuzzy hot sweater. And here's another hot thing. I couldn't roll down my window because it didn't have a handle and so I just kept getting hotter and hotter. And it smelled in the bus too. The bus smelled like an exiled sandwich. I want to get off of here, I said out loud, but nobody heard me. I don't like this smelly bus. Then my eyes got a little bit wet. I wasn't crying though, because I'm not a baby, that's why. After that, my nose started running. Only the bus didn't have any, a glove compartment, which is where you keep the travel tissues, of course. And so I had to wipe my nose in my fuzzy pink sweater sleeve. And then I stayed on the bus for about an hour or three until finally I saw a flagpole in a playground. That meant we were at kindergarten. Then Mr. Wu drove the bus into the parking lot and stopped. I jumped up very fast because all I wanted to do was get off that smelly thing. Only guess what? That gym pushed right in front of me. And that curly, mean-haired girl did too. And then the people started squishing me real tight. And so I pushed them away and they pushed me right back. And that is when I fell down. Stop it! I yelled. Then Mr. Wu hollered, hey, hey, hey! And he picked me up and he helped me off the bus. Mrs. was waiting for me, just like my mother said. Hi, I'm glad to see you, she called. Then I ran over to her and I showed her the big footprint on my skirt that looks like velvet. Yeah, only look what happened. I got stepped on and now I'm dirty. Mrs. brushed it. Don't worry, Junie, she said. It will come off. After that, I just folded my arms and made a frown. Because guess what? She forgot my B again. Junie B is really not having a good first day of school, is she? Yikes. Hope it turns out better for her. Let's find out. Chapter four, me and Lucille and some other kids. Some of the other bus kids turned out to be from my class too. One of them was that gym, that gym I don't like. Mrs. made us line up. Then we followed her to our room. Its name is room nine. There were other kids waiting by the door. When Mrs. unlocked it, everyone squeezed in all at once. That gym stepped on my new shoe. He made a scratch mark on my shiny toe. The kind of scratch that licking won't fix. Hey, watch it, Jim, I shouted. Mrs. bent down next to me. Let's try to use our quiet voice when we're in school, she said. I nodded nicely. I don't like that, Jim, I told Mrs. in my quiet voice. After that, Mrs. clapped her loud hands together. I want everyone to find a chair and sit down as fast as you can, she said. That's when I ran to the table with a red chair. Only guess what? There was already someone sitting there, a girl with red fingernails. And so I tapped on her and I said, I would like to sit there, I think. No, she said. I am. Yeah, only I already picked out that chair, I told her. Ask my mother if you don't believe me. But the girl just shook her head no. And then Mrs. clapped her loud hands again and said, please find a seat. And so then I had to quick sit down in a yellow chair, the same color as that yellow bus. After that, Mrs. walked to a big closet at the back of the room. It's called the supply closet. She got out boxes of new pointy crayons and some white circles. Then she passed them out, and we had to print our names in the circles and put them on our fronts. It was our first work. If you need help spelling your name, raise your hand, she said. I raised my hand. I don't need help, I told her. Grandma Miller says I print beautifully. I used red, but then a mistake happened. I made my Junie too big, and there wasn't any room left for my B. And so I had to squish it very teeny at the bottom. I don't like this circle, I shouted. Mrs. made the shh sound and gave me a new one. Thank you, I said nicely. Grandma Miller says I print beautifully. The girl with the red fingernails was faster than me. She showed me her circle and pointed at her letters. L-U-C-I-L-L-E, she said that name of Lucille, I said, because guess why? Seals are my favorite animals, that's why. Then Mrs. passed out a drawing paper and drew pictures. we drew pictures of our family. Mrs. put a happy face sticker on mine. It was very good, except it made my father too teeny and mother's hair looked like sticks. After that, Mrs. took our class on a walk around the school. Everyone had to find a buddy to walk with. My buddy was Lucille. We held hands. The quiet, scared boy was in front of us. His buddy was that gym, that gym I don't like. The first place we walked to was called the Media Center. My mother called it a library. That's where the books are. And guess what? Books are my very favorite things in the whole world. Hey, there's a giant of them in here, I hollered, feeling very excited. I think I love this place. The librarian bent down next to me. She said to use my quiet voice. Yeah, only guess what? Right now, I just like the kinds of books with pictures, but mother says when I get big, I'm going to like the kind with just words and also stewed tomatoes. The 
quiet, scared boy said, shh. So I turned around and I made an angry face at him and he turned around. After that, we went to the cafeteria. The cafeteria is where kids eat lunch, except not when you're in kindergarten. Um, I said, it smells like yummy in here, like pescetti and meatballs. Then that Jim I don't like turned around and held his nose. P.U., he said, I smell you. And Lucille laughed very hard. And so I stopped holding her hand. The next place we went to was the nurse's office. It's very cute in that place. There are two little beds where you can get to lie down and two little blankets that are the color of plaid. Our nurse doesn't look like a nurse. She doesn't wear white clothes and white shoes. Our nurse is just a regular color. Lucille raised her hand. My brother said that last year he came here and you let him take off his shoes and he got a drink of water and just his socks. That gym I don't like turned around again. P.U. I smell your feet, he said to Lucille. And then Lucille made a face at him. And after that, we held hands. Chapter 5, Principal. After we left the nurse, we went to the main office. That's where the boss of the school lives. His name is Principal. Principal is bald. He talked to us. Then Lucille raised her hand. My brother said last year he had to come down here and you yelled at him and now he's not allowed to beat up kids at recess anymore. Principal kind of laughed. Then he held the door for us to leave. After that, we walked to the water fountain and Mrs. let us get a drink. I didn't get a long one though because kids kept tapping me. Hurry up, girl, they said. You only guess what? That's not even my name, I told them. Her name is Junie Bumblebee, said Lucille. Then she laughed. But I didn't think it was a very funny joke. After that, Mrs. showed us where the bathrooms were. There's two kinds of bathrooms in our school, a boy's kind and a girl's kind. I can't go in the boy's kind, though, because no girls are allowed, that's why. I tried to peek my head in there, but Mrs. snapped her fingers at me. The only boy who got to go into the bathroom was the boy that's quiet and shy. He was jiggling around very much. Then he started running all over the place, and he was holding the front of his pants. William, said Mrs., are you having an emergency? Then William said, yes, and he ran right in there. The rest of us walked back to our room. Is William having that bathroom emergency? The rest of us walked back to our room. I touched Lucille's fingernails. She said her fingernail, fingernail polish is very, very, very. I would like to have my fingernails red too, I said. But I'm only allowed to have the kind of polish that makes them look shiny. His name is Clear. Clear is the color of spit. I don't like clear, said Lucille. Me too, I said. And also, I don't like yellow which is the color of that smelly school bus. Lucille nodded her head. My brother said when you ride home in the bus, kids put chocolate milk on your head. Then all of a sudden my stomach felt very squeezy again because I had to ride the bus home, that's why. Why did you have to tell me that for Lucille? I said kind of grouchy. I'm gonna pause you there. I have ridden a school bus before. Nobody pours milk on anyone's head. Lucille's brother was just saying that to make her feel a little bit nervous, I think. But now Jenny B's feeling nervous about it. <sighs> All right, back to the book. After we got back to room nine, we did some more work. It was a game to help us learn each other's names. I learned Lucille and also a girl named Charlotte and another girl named Grace. Then I learned a boy named Ham, which is what we eat at Grandma Miller's. Pretty soon, Mrs. clapped her lot hands together. Okay, everyone, gather up your things. It's almost time for the bell. Then I heard a noise in the parking lot. It was the screechy brakes. And so I looked out the window and I saw the school bus. It was coming to get me. Oh no, I said kind of loud. Now I'm gonna get chocolate milk poured on my head. No, she's not. And then I chewed on my fingers. Get in line, get in line, said Mrs. When we get outside, I want all of my students to come with me. The rest of you must go to the crossing guard. Everyone was lining up. I was the very last one. Just then the bell rang and Mrs. marched us out the door. Then everyone else marched out too, except what? Guess what? I didn't. All right, boys and girls, we are halfway through the book. So let's recap, just in case you are starting this today and forgot what happened earlier. So Junie B rode a bus to school. She had a hard bus ride to school. She said it was smelly, she was hot, and she thought kids were being mean. Well, now that it's time to go home, everybody was lining up to go out to the bus or to get ready to walk home with her family. But Junie B didn't walk out which I do not recommend. Always stay with the group. But this girl, Junie B, there's a lot of things she shouldn't, right? Chapter six, a good hider. When you're the very last one in line, nobody watches you. Not true, I'm always watching. 
That's how come nobody saw me when I ducked behind the teacher's desk and hid. <gasps> Don't do that, boys and girls. I'm a very good hider. One time at Grandma Miller's house, I hid under the kitchen sink. Then I made a growly sound and I sprung out at her. I'm not allowed to do that anymore. Anyway, I stayed scrunched up behind the teacher's desk for a while, and then I saw a better place to hide. It was the big supply closet at the back of the room. And so I ran back there very fast, and I squeezed into the bottom shelf, and I squeezed right on top of the construction paper. Most of the time, most of me was comfortable, except my head was sort of tight, and my knees were all bended like I was doing a somersault. Then I pulled the door mostly closed. Don't shut it all the way though. And I mean it, I said out loud to myself. I stayed real quiet for lots of minutes. Then I heard noises in the hall and some feet came running into the room. Big people's feet, I think. What happened? I heard someone ask. One of my little girls is lost, said a voice that sounded like Mrs. Her name is Junie B. Jones and she didn't get on the bus. So now we've got to go looking for her. Then I heard some keys jingle and feet went running out again and then the door shut. I still didn't come out of the closet though. When you're a good hider, you can't come out for a real long time. I just stayed in there all bended up and I told myself a story. Not an out loud story, I just told it inside my head. It was called The Little Hiding Girl. I made it up and this is how the story went. Once upon a time, there was a little hiding girl. She was in a secret spot where nobody could find her except her head was very tight and her brain was squishing out, but she still couldn't come out of her spot or a smelly yellow monster would come get her. Also some meanies with chocolate milk, the end. After that, I rested my eyes. Resting your eyes is what my grandpa does when he watches TV after dinner. Then he snores, and Grandma Miller says, Go to bed, Frank. It's not quite the same thing as a nap, though, because naps are for babies, that's why. And anyway, I didn't snore. I just did a little drool. Then finally, when my eyes were done resting, they woke up. And so I came out of the closet and ran to the window. And guess what? There weren't any cars in the parking lot. And no smelly bus either. Phew, that's a relief, I said. A relief is when your stomach doesn't feel squeezy anymore. After that, I went to the closet because while I was hiding, I smelled some clay, that's why. And clay is my very favorite thing in the whole wide world. Hey, I see it up there, I said. The clay was at the middle shelf. I stood on a chair to get it. It was blue and stiff. And so I had to roll it on the floor to make it soft and warm. And then I rolled it into a bl blue and orange. It was very beautiful, except I had some dirt and hair on it. After I was done, I went to the front of the room and sat down in my teacher's big chair teacher's desk very much. The drawers are so big, I could fit in one, I think. I opened the top drawer. There were happy face stickers and rubber bands and also gold stars, which I love a very lot. Then I found some paper clips. I stuck some stickers on my forehead. And I found red markers and pens and new pencils with no points and scissors and travel tissues. And guess what else? Chalk, I said. Brand new chalk that's not even out of its little box yet. Then I stood up in the teacher's chair and I clapped my hands together very loud. I want everyone to find a chair and sit down. Today we're going to learn some alphabet and some reading. And also I will teach you how to make blue orange. But first everyone has to watch me draw stuff. Then I went to the board and drew with my brand new chalk. I drew a bean and a carrot with some curly hair. Then I wrote some O's. O's are my bestest letter. After that, I bowed. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now you may all, may all go out to recess. I smiled, except for not that jam. So before I read chapter seven, let's talk about what happened last chapter. You remember when those grown-ups came running into the room and were trying to find her? It was Mrs. and probably someone else helping look for her. How do you think Mrs. is feeling right now? I know if it were me, I would be so, so worried. What Judy B. did was not okay. I wonder if her parents are going to find out. Most likely, if anyone in school went missing, we'd have to call right away. Let's find out what happens. Chapter seven, peaky holes and spying. After a while, I started to get a little bit thirsty. That's what happens when chalk sprinkles get in your throat. I would like a drink of water, I think, I said. Then I put my hands on my hips. Yeah, but what if someone else sees you with a water fountain? Then they might call the smelly bus to come get you, and so you better not go. I stomped my foot. Ugh, yeah, only I have to go, cause that there's chalk in my throat. Then all of a sudden I got a great idea. I pulled a chair over to the door and I peeked out the window with the top. I'm a good peeker, I think. One time I peeked right into Grandpa Miller's mouth while he was sleeping and I saw that little dangly thing that hangs down in the back. I didn't touch it though, cause I didn't have a stick or anything, that's why. Anyway, I didn't see anybody in the hall and so I opened the door a crack and I sniffed. 
because sniffing is what you do to smell if there's people around. I learned sniffing from my dog Tickle. Dogs can smell anything. People can mostly smell just big smells like stink and flowers and dinner. Nope, don't smell anyone, I said. Then I ran to the water fountain and I drank for a long time and nobody tapped on me and said, hurry up girl. After that, I stood on my tippy toes and I tippy toed to the media center because I love that place, remember? The media center is kind of like a fort. The shelves are like walls and the books are like sort of like bricks and you can move some of them around and make peaky holes. Peaky holes are what you can spy out of. Then if you see somebody coming, you can make your breath real quiet and they won't find you. I spied for a very long time, but nobody came. The only people in the media center were just me and some fish. The fish were in a glass tank. I waved at them in there. Then I stirred them with a pencil. I love fish very much. I eat them for dinner with coleslaw. Just then I saw my most favorite thing in the whole wide world. Its name was an electric pencil sharpener. And it was sitting right on the librarian's desk. Hey, I said, I think I know how to work that thing. And then I looked in the desk drawer and guess what? There were lots of brand new pencils in there. And so I sharpened them. It was funner than anything because an electric pencil sharpener makes a nice noise and you can make pencils as teeny as you want. You just keep pushing them into the little hole and they just keep getting teenier and teenier. It doesn't work on crayons though. I tried a red one. Then the pencil sharpener slowed way down and then it made a sound. And after that, it didn't go anymore. Just then I heard a noise. It was walking feet and it made me scared inside because I didn't want anyone to find me, that's why. And so I squatted way down and I looked through my pee hee hole. Then I saw a man with a trash can. He was singing Somewhere Over the Rainbow. That's a song I know, it's from my favorite movie which is called The Wizard of Oz. The man with the can didn't see me. He walked down the hall, then I heard him go outside. I stayed squatted down for a long time, but he never came back. Phew, that was a close one, I said. And so I ran to find a better place to hide. Chapter eight, the dangerous nurse's office. Guess where I ran to? Straight to the nurse's office, of course, cause there's those little plaid blankets to hide under. There's other neat stuff in there too, like a scale to weigh yourself and a sign with a giant E and other letters. The nurse uses the sign to test your eyes. She points at the letters and you have to yell at their names. You have to yell E out the loudest. That's how come it's so big. And guess what else I saw in the nurse's office? Band-aids, that's what. I love those guys. They're on the top of the desk. And so I opened the lid and I sniffed them. Mmm, I said, cause band-aids smell just like a brand new beach ball. Then I dumped them out. They were the most prettiest band-aids I ever saw. They were red and blue and green and also yellow, which is a color I don't like. And they were the sh uh, different shapes too. There were squares and circles and some that were very long kind, which is called tangles, I think. I put a green circle on my knee. That's where I fell down on the sidewalk last week. It's mostly all better now, but if I press it really hard with my thumb, it's still gonna hurt. After that, I put a blue tangle on my finger. That's where I got a splinter from the picnic table. Mother pulled it out with tweezers, but there's still some table in there, I think. Also, I put on a red square in my arm. That's where Tickle scratched me because I got him all wound up. Just then, I saw the nurse's purple sweater. It was hanging on her chair. I put it on. Now I'm the nurse, I said. Then I sat down and I pretended to call the hospital. Hello, hospital, it's me, the nurse. I need some more band-aids and some aspirins and some cherry cough drops, only not the kind that make your mouth feel freezy. And I need some lollipop for when kids get needles. And also, I need a little stick or something in case I have to touch that dangly thing that hangs down in the back of your throat. Then I pretended to call room nine. <clears throat> Hello, Mrs. Please send that Jim to my office. I have to give him a shot. Just then, I saw my most favorite thing in the whole wide world. They were crutches. They were right near the door. Crutches are for when you break a leg. Then the doctor puts in a big white cast on your legs with your little piggy toe sticking out. And then you can, can't walk on it. And so she gives you crutches to swing yourself around. I ran over and I picked them up. Then I put them under my arms. Only they were way too long for me. And I didn't swing that good. And so then I got another idea. I carry the crutches to the nurse's chair. And I climbed up there so I was real tall. And then I put the crutches under my arms and they fitted just right. After that, I stood on the edge of the chair and I leaned forward very slow. Except then a terrible thing happened. The chair was on wheels and it rolled away from my feet. And I got stuck on the crutches way high up in the air. And I was very dangly up there. Hey, I shouted, get me down from here. 
Then I wiggled around and one of the crutches slipped and I came crashing down and I banged my head on the desk. Ow! I yelled, ow, ow! And then I picked up the phone again. I quit this job! And then I ran out of there very fast because the nurse's office is a dangerous place and crutches aren't my favorite thing. Chapter nine, there are two more chapters left. Zooming speedy fast. I like running inside of the school. It's funner than running inside your house. In school, you can zoom with your arms out like a jet plane and you don't knock over the furniture. And also, the head doesn't get broken off your mother's bird statue, which used to be a blue jay, I think. I zoom straight to the cafeteria because there's a lot of tables to hide under that place. Only when I tried to open the door, it was all locked up. And so then I ran to another room across the hall. Only that door was locked too. Hey, who did all this locking, I said. Then I started jiggling up and down because I was having a bit of a problem, that's why. The kind of problem that's called personal and it's about going to the potty. And so I had, all of a sudden I had to run down the hall speedy quick right to the girls' bathroom. Only guess what? When I got there, that door wouldn't open either. And so I kicked it and I hanged on the handle because I weigh 37. Open up and I mean it, I yelled at the door. But the door kept staying shut. It's emergency, I said. And then all of a sudden, I remembered about that boy who was quiet and scared because he had an emergency too and he got to go to the boys' bathroom. And so I zoomed across the hall and I pulled on the boys' bathroom door. But that thing was locked too. Ah, doors, I hollered. After that, I started to jiggle up and down very fast. Oh no, now I'm gonna have an accident on my skirt that looks like velvet. Only just then, I remembered something else about emergencies because mother told me what to do if I ever needed help. And its name is to call 911. I'm gonna pause here, boys and girls. So Junie B said when there's an emergency to call 911. Let's think about this emergency she has right now. She has to go to the bathroom. Now, do you think that that is an okay time to call 911? I hope you're saying no. You don't need to call 911 for a bathroom problem. That's not a huge, huge emergency where somebody is in super danger. Please don't call 911 for a bathroom problem. So I ran back to the dangerous nurse's office because that's where the phone was, of course. And then I picked it up and I pushed the nine and then the one and then another one. <sighs> I don't like this part. Help! This is an emergency, I yelled. All the doors are locked in this place and now I'm gonna have a terrible accident. Then I heard a voice in the other end. She said for me to calm down. Yes, but I can't. I'm in big trouble and I'm all by myself and I need help real bad. Then the lady said to calm down again, except for I couldn't stand still and so I just hung up and ran right out of there. And so I just kept running and running until I got to the big doors at the end of the hall. And then I ran right outside because maybe there might be a toilet out there or something except I didn't see one, and all I could hear were sirens, loud sirens, all over the place. And they kept on getting closer and closer. And then a big green fire truck came zooming right around the corner, and a white police car, and a fast red ambulance, and guess what else? They turned right into the school parking lot. They're all there for her. And so I stopped jiggling for a second, and I sniffed the air. Only I couldn't smell the smoke. Then I heard a grouchy voice, hey! Hold it, Missy, it yelled. And I got very scared inside because Missy's my name when I'm in trouble. I turned around. It was the man with the can and he was running at me. Hold it right there, he hollered again. And then I started to cry. But that's the trouble, I can't hold it. I already hold it all I can, I said. And now I'm having an emergency and the bathrooms are all locked and now I'm gonna have an accident very quick. And so the man with the can didn't look grouchy anymore. Well, why didn't you say so, he said. Then he pulled a big bunch of keys out of his pocket and he grabbed my hand and then him and me zoomed back into the school speedy quick. Before I start chapter 10, let's review what has been happening in this book. So. Very entertaining, isn't it? But Junie B called 911 because there was a bathroom problem. She had to go to the bathroom and she couldn't open the door. Ay, ay, ay. But you know, none of this would have happened if she had gone out of the classroom at the end of the day like she was supposed to. 
because she decided to stay inside, she made everybody so worried. And then she called 911. And then the fire truck, police, they're all coming to help because I think there's a serious emergency. But is it really a huge emergency? No. That girl. <sighs> Chapter 10. Me and that Grace. The man with the can unlocked the girl's bathroom for me and I ran right in there. And guess what? I made it. That's what. I didn't have an accident on my skirt that looked like velvet. Phew, that was a close one, I said. Then I washed my hands at the sink and I looked in the mirror and the gold star was still on my forehead. I looked very beautiful up there. After that, I went into the hall and the man with the can bended down next to me. Everything okay? I nodded my head. I holded it, I said, very happy. Then all of a sudden, there were lots of people running at us. There were firemen and policemen, and there was a tall lady rolling a bed on wheels. Hey, I said to the man with the can, what happened? Does somebody get squashed with a car or something in here? Then I saw principal and mother. They were running at us too. And then mother bent down and hugged me very tight. After that, everybody started talking all at once and nobody was using their quiet voices. Nobody was smiling either. Principal was asking me a jillion questions. Mostly they were questions about hiding in the supply closet. I'm a good hider, I told him. Principal acted a little bit grumpy. He said I wasn't allowed to do that anymore. When you go to school, you have to follow the rules, he said. What would happen if everybody, every boy and girl hid in the supply closet after school? It would be very smushy in there, I told him. Then he made his eyes frowny. But we wouldn't know where anyone was, would we? Yeah, I said. We would all be in the supply closet. Then Principal looked up at the ceiling. I looked up there too, but I didn't see anything. After that, Mother looked down at my band-aids. Did you hurt yourself? She asked. And so I told her all about the dangerous nurse's office. And then I showed her, showed her the purple sweater. And she made me give it back. After that, everybody started leaving. The firemen and the policeman, and also the tall lady with the bed. Then finally, my mother got to take me home, and guess what? I didn't have to ride that smelly bus. Except the car wasn't that fun, because mother was very grouchy at me. I'm sorry the bus wasn't fun for you, Junie B, she said, but what you did was very, very wrong. Didn't you see all the commotion you caused? You had a lot of people very scared. Yeah, but I didn't want chocolate milk poured on my head, I explained to her. That is not going to happen, growled mother. And you can't just decide for yourself not to ride the bus. Hundreds of kids ride the bus every day. They can do it. You can too. Then my eyes got wet again. Yeah, but there's meanies on that thing, I said very sniffily. Then mother stopped being so growly. What if you had a friend to ride with, she said. Your teacher told me there's a girl in your class who's, who will be riding the bus for the first time tomorrow. Maybe you could sit together. Would you like that? and made my shoulders go up and down. Her name is Grace, said mother. Grace, I said, hey, I know that Grace, I learned her today. And so when we got home, mother called that Grace's mother and they talked and then me and that Grace talked too. And I said, hi, and she said, hi. And then she said she would sit with me. And so tomorrow I get to take my little red purse on the bus and then I get to put it on the seat next to me so nobody will sit there, nobody except for that Grace, of course. And then she and me might get to be buddies and we can hold hands just like me and Lucille. I don't like that, I think. And guess what else? Tomorrow, I think I might like the yellow bus a little bit too. The end. We finished our first chapter book. How exciting. So, quite a ride that book was, wasn't it? I like these books because they're kind of fun to read and they're pretty entertaining. But I don't want anybody in this class getting the idea that the choices Junie B makes are good choices all the time. There were a lot of things Junie B did that she shouldn't have. Not going out with the teacher, making angry faces at kids, hiding from people, calling 911. Oh my goodness. Junie B is kind of wild and makes a lot of mistakes, but it's pretty entertaining stories, isn't it? All right. Catch you next time for the next book. Bye.